In part one of this series, we created a Windows form that has two buttons that control an LED on an Arduino board. That was a lot of fun for a while, but now I want to control a servo and dim some LEDs. Can we do it? We'll find out on today's episode of... Controlling the LED on the Arduino involved passing digital commands from the PC GUI to the Arduino board. It was a simple and straightforward process to send the on-off commands, but now we want to enhance the program to control a servo motor. The main difference is that this data is analog, which requires more information to be passed in each command. To do this, we will change both the Arduino and c -sharp programs. Let's start with the c -sharp program and program the servo angle feature. To provide the servo control, we will add an additional button and a text box to the form. The text box will hold the angle that we want the motor to move to, and the button will send that data to the Arduino in the form of a command. So let's get started. First, let's move the buttons out of the way to somewhere convenient on the form. Now, grab a text box from the toolbox and place it on the form. It will automatically be named text box one and we will leave it that way for convenience. That is all we need to do for configuring the text box. Next, grab a button from the toolbox and drop it on the form. Rename the button servo angle servo angle and change the text property to send angle so we'll move down to the text property send angle okay now we are ready to program the click event so double click the send angle button and you will the code window will open up and you will notice that there is a servo angle click event that has been created for us okay now let's put in that function stub the following code let's put a comment first that says send angle value to servo. Okay, then let's create a string and let's call it M1 and set it equal to a capital S, which will be the command letter for the servo. And then we will append to that the text box data which is the text property of it so we'll just put in text box one dot text that will create a string that will have the value or the letter s then appended immediately behind that will be a number that we will type in the box that will be between 0 and 180 degrees, which is the maximum angle that we can drive the servo through. And then all we need to do now is just to send that data to the Arduino with the serial 1 port, or I'm sorry, it's a serial port, one dot write command sending it the argument m1 and then follow that with a semicolon and then we are complete so that's it for the c-sharp servo motor programming 
Next, we need to change the Arduino program to catch and decode these commands. To make the Arduino code more versatile, we will replace the IF statements for the LEDs with a switch statement. So just delete the code from IF D1 through the ELSE. Just delete that and replace it with this code. Switch on D1 and then open a brace and that will add an additional brace for you. And then let's just add a comment here that says select action based upon first character. Okay, so that's that. Now, in this uh, switch statement, we want to add a case based on the letter A, capital A, that will be if D1 is a capital A, okay, that means that the first character is an A, which equals turn on pin 13 LED. And then we will digital write pin 13 a high like that and then we will add a new command called break which is inserted there so that we will not process any more cases in the switch statement so that handles the case where we have a capital A so now let's add the case for a lowercase a which is a colon, and then we'll add the comment. First character is an A, lowercase a, which equals turn off. And then we will just issue the digital write command to pin 13 to go low, to go low like that, and then we will issue a break command with a semicolon, and then make sure that we now have our closing brace. So we should be fine. We should be able to compile this to verify everything is correct. So we do have a correct switch statement form. So we're in good shape. Now, we're going to add the servo capability to the program, so we need to include the servo.h file, and we'll need to create a couple new variables. So, at the top of the program, let's make this a little wider. At the top of the program, very top, let's move these variables that we've got down. We're going to add include pound include and then that and a capital S-E-R-V-O dot H and then close that. That will now include the files we need to handle the servo. So below that let's go ahead and add some variables we'll need to process the servo data. So we'll need a string which string which we will call X and that will hold the servo angle information that is received as a string from the PC then we're going to need an integer called servo val that we will use to store a number to send to the servo to turn that will be the angle value and then we need to create a servo an instance of a servo called S1 for us to refer to the servo. Okay, so that's all done. But one final thing we need to do to attach the servo is to go to the setup function and add 
s1.attach and then in parentheses the channel we want to attach it to which in my case is channel 9 so let's add a command that says make output 9 the servo channel okay so we're ready to go we're ready to program the servo itself so at this point we will be adding a new case statement to the switch to catch and decode the capital S that indicates that it is a servo command. So after the break and before the close brace, let's just go ahead and enter a new line and we will add the case to decode to decode a capital S like that with a colon and so this is first character is an S which equals servo okay or set servo angle and then we will have to handle the um, in the case itself so let's take X and in X we will store the servo value which happens to be in the data as a substring starting at position 1 so the first character in data was the S the next character and all of the following characters in that string will be some number between 0 and 180 that will be the angle we want the servo to move through. So we put that into a string variable, but the servo cannot use a string. We have to convert that to an integer. So in servo val, let us put the value, the integer value of that x substring using the to int function of the string class that will convert that to a number and then we can finally send that to the servo itself with the right function of the servo and send it servo val okay so now the servo should be turning but it's kind of slow so just so that we don't do anything too soon let's do a delay of about a hundred milliseconds just to let it finally reach its destination so we'll just say wait for servo um, that's uh, to finish okay so that's it and now all we need to do is break and we're done so looking down at the rest of the file we should be there uh, we should be fine let's go ahead and see if we've got everything compiled correctly it is compiled correctly so we're good to go and that's it the program is ready to go so compile and download it to the Arduino board so I've loaded the program onto the Arduino board and now we are ready to run the C Sharp program. First, let's fix the GUI up a little bit by moving the button and text box to be more visually connected. So let's put the set angle or send angle box there or button there and then we'll just put the text box next to it. So we're ready to go with that. So we should be able to just click the green arrow up on the menu bar by start and run the program. But wouldn't you know it, we have some errors. So let's not run it with anything that's good because it never ran before. And let's check what the error says that we've got. It says that the left-hand side of an assignment must be a variable property or indexer. Well, okay, so left-hand side of an assignment, that means that there's probably a problem with a 
formula that we've got. So let's go to the program. And this is the only code that we put in, so it's got to be somewhere in here. And, well, we've got an issue here. We've got the S is red with a squiggle underneath it, and then it's got two equal signs. Well, that's not good. So let's take this equal sign here, and let's just change it into a plus sign. And now all of that stuff went away, so apparently we fixed it. Just go back to the form, the design, and now let's just see if it runs. Okay, so it did run, and we've now got our functional form. I'll bring it into view here. You can see that we got the turn on and turn off. Let's see if those still work. Turn on, the light comes on, turn off. The light goes off, so our LED on pin 13 is still functional. And now let's try the servo. Let's put a zero in the text box and then send it and watch and see if the motor turns. Oh, well, it turned. Okay, well, let's change that to 90 degrees. And let's see how far it turns for 90 degrees. Well, that's pretty cool. Let's go to 120 and send that value. Okay, it's a little slow and we'll fix that up in the next video. But so far, everything all works and we now have added a functional servo motor to the mix and we know how to send analog data from the PC to the Arduino, so we're making some headway. Next, we'll extend the program to dim some LEDs in the next video. So, thanks for watching.